Hey everybody, it's your fellow neighborhood saxman Alex here. If you're new here, check out my Get to Know Me video. If you haven't already, check out my other series. My performance series, my chat with me series, and my review series. Welcome back to another Sax Ed episode with Alex Ramirez. I know it's been a while. It's definitely been a while since we've had our last Sax Ed episode. I know you've all been asking for new Sax Ed material for me to talk about. And I have come today with a new concept. What I am going to talk about is how to practice fourths while soloing. Playing fourths expands your playing. It gives you a different perspective on how to reach certain notes. It might even make you land on a certain note that you would never play before. So I dug deep on Google and on certain websites that offered music theory knowledge and started noticing some ways that people practice fourths. They would practice it diatonically, they would practice it chromatically, and they would practice it using certain shapes and intervals. All these three pillars of practicing fourths are super important to know and to differentiate from one another because even though they are fourths, using them in these different types of forms create completely different sounds. So the number one thing that you have to practice is to understand how fourths relate to the chords that you're playing over. So if you want to do diatonic fourths, you have to understand the scale of the chord that you're playing. So for example, if you have a C major seven, you can start playing fourths from every scale degree in the chord. You just have to be conscious of all the scale degrees. So if you start on C, your next note up the fourth would be F, and then from F you would have to go to B natural, given C major seven. So it's a perfect fourth and an augmented fourth. It sounds awesome, and you can do this for every scale degree of the chord. Very quickly, every fourth scale degree, just two fourths. C, F, B, B, G, C, E, A, B, F, B, E, G, C, F, A, G, G, E, E, A, and then once again, C, F, B, F. So you can experiment with these fourths and try to play over them over a tune where there's a C major seven or whatever chord that you want to practice on. Now, if we move to chromatic fourths, chords go out the window. You can do whatever you want. Now, that does not mean play 10,000 fourths in a row. It means that you have to use it sparingly and often know where you're going to. This happened to me all the time. I would start playing fourths all over the place and then I would forget where I was in the form and then I would just try to stumble and get back to where I need to resolve, which is a no-no. So how do you practice chromatic fourths? Easy. I would strongly suggest that if you're going to start playing a line of fourths, that you start in a position where you know you're going to be able to resolve either through a whole step of resolution or a half step of resolution. Say it again, we have our C major seven. If you wanna chromatically use fourths within the C major seven, start in a very dissonant note, like D flat or G flat. And you can play a string of two or three fourths going up, or you could start doing a fourth, like for example, D flat, G flat, and then E flat, a flat, kind of like that in whole steps going up until you find yourself resolving to a nice note in the C major seven. Now the third pillar of playing fourths is using shapes with them. Now what do I mean by that? I don't mean like a triangle, a square, and a circle. No, <laughs> I mean melodic shapes. Shapes that you would utilize that often you don't think are fourths, but they are. For example, a triad has a fourth in it. Now everybody might think, no, what the hell, you're stupid. No, <laughs> there is no fourth and a triad. It's a third and a third. Trust me, we have this little thing called inversion. And if you go to the second inversion of a triad, for example, a C triad, which is C, E, G, if the G is in the bottom and the C is in the middle and the E is on top, you have your fourth right there. Voila, you can use it either diatonically, chromatically, or with any other harmonic concept that you feel that would spice things up in your soul. Salt Bay of that solo. So how do you practice this? Again, let's use C major seven while we're at it. <laughs> if we have a C major seven, you can use the second inversion of that C triad to create that fourth with a shape of a triad, which sounds awesome. Now you can, again, do this in every scale tone, or you can transpose it chromatically, say up in whole steps or up in minor thirds, up in major seconds, up in minor seconds, 
you can do whatever you want. But as long as you have a kind of shape that doesn't necessarily have to be a triad, you could create a shape such as G, C, F, and D by going up the fourth to C, up again a fourth to F, and going down to the D to create a melodic shape that moves along the harmony. So these three different ways of using fourths in your playing can help you expand your language and help you expand your range and it can also help you expand the ideas coming into your solo. So I'm going to show you a bit of me playing over impressions using fourths in my solos to try to weave in and out of the changes, develop motives, and to just transition between sections. So sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you in a bit. you enjoyed the concept and there are many more ways to play fourths while soloing so explore be curious find out what works for you and find out what you like let me know in the comments down below how you practice your fourths thank you for watching the video and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on facebook and instagram for more standards beats and ballads stay sexy and don't forget to subscribe